Namaste. Welcome. My name is Kata from the Salara. I'm a yoga teacher, yogini, teacher trainer, and passionate, passionate about yin yoga. So today I bring you a wonderful yin yoga practice to take you into a serene place inside of you. I call this practice the temple practice and I love to combine mudras, energy work with my yin. So this is what we're going to do today as well. Find a nice comfortable sitting position and just to have everything ready we will need a block possibly maybe not maybe yes so that's the only thing and possibly a blanket because in yin yoga sometimes we can get really cold especially by the end of the practice when the body is cooling down so if you know that you are easily cold then just have a blanket nearby and let's start so it's raining today rain is nourishing it's very rare in Ibiza that we have so much rain as this year. But maybe you enjoy this kind of soothing sound in the background. As I said, that always brings nourishment to the earth. So that's kind of fitting our yin yoga practice. So settle down. And just take this little moment to land here in your own space. To connect to your body, relaxing the areas where you feel there is maybe some tension. And relaxing our breath. Let it come and go effortlessly. And tune into the softness, the gentleness of your breath. Every inhalation that you take, lead down to your center, is inviting you to be here, to be welcome in this moment, to ground, to land. And every exhalation, it's a wonderful way to soften, to let go. And release thoughts and stories that are not important in this moment. Notice for a moment how you feel. Is there anything particularly strong going on in the mind? Is the mind busy? Maybe with a concrete story? Or are there just random thoughts coming and going? Or maybe a rather quiet mind? And then notice also how are your emotions today? Is there anything on the surface? If you would tune into your mood, what we can also call the bhava, our inner state. What is the main emotion you have? And 
And it's so important that we develop a space of acceptance and exploration so we are not trying to fix anything or change or judge. We're just with kindness, kind curiosity, exploring how things are in this moment. And then also noticing the physical body, is there any area that is drawing your attention that is more sensitive, more warm, more pulsing, more tense, or cold, or numb? And then slowly let's just get our hands into a temple mudra. You can bring your hands together in prayer position. Then just leave the middle finger, ring finger and pinky together, just like they would be in prayer. And then bend the index so it comes inside. And then close it with the thumbs. I hope you can see that. Right? And then we're going to place this in front of the heart. Leave a little space between the two palms. So that symbolizes as well that there is this space in our temple. There is space to breathe, space to be, space to welcome us. And this is a wonderful mudra to help us create space between all the experiences we have, all the push and pulls of life, the stories, and ourself. So we are able to not react, to not be pulled into, but stay in that centered space, in the temple, in that connectedness. Not with force, but with ease and grace. And not fighting anything that would pull us, distract us. But just bless it. And give yourself permission to sit in this temple. Like this mudra ground you into your center, let your breath create space and release what you don't need in this moment. If you're a visual type, maybe you even want to imagine this temple, how it looks, the shapes, the colors, the atmosphere. Are you alone in there or with many like-minded, like-hearted people? Let every breath connect you to your center. Every exhalation 
helps to fade away thoughts, stories, emotions, as we're none of them. Remember, we are not our stories, we are not things that happen to us. We are not our emotions, we are not our thoughts, not our mind. And not even the physical body. this pure presence, being able to observe it all, embrace it all, And then let's just have a last breath here, a nice long inhale. If you want, you can exhale through the mouth. And we can just chant internally one arm, um, imagine, in the center of this temple. We let it resonate, so taking a deep breath in without the vocal cords. slowly open your eyes and gently taking the hands down if you want you can place them onto your knees and you can do a little bit of shoulder rolls uh, so we'll work with the shoulders today a little bit of neck rolls or neck movement And then let's just find our way into a nice child's pose with open knees, with those together. And either the arms reach in forward straight, or if you have the ability, then create a little prayer position with your hands. So fingers pointing upward. We're aiming to open the shoulders, feeling an openness here, the inner arms and opening the hips slightly, the inner legs, inner thighs, and maybe even gently feeling a stretch on your back. You can support your head with a block, or if this is too much, you can of course always have a hand in prayer underneath your forehead as well. Find an option where you can imagine you can stay there without too much intensity, no pain for the upcoming three minutes. As in yin yoga, we hold the poses longer, but in a passive way, you shouldn't be affording in the pose. And you shouldn't be going to the furthest edge, to the most intense place. You just really find a place where can find ease and the breath flows naturally without difficulty. If it's too high, I mean, if it's too low for you to go down, you could also have a bolster here across and just be on it with your arms. And once you have your pose, just come back to the breath. Feel how the inhale is gently, naturally caressing you, soothing places, observe them. And with the exhalation, you can always let go. 
relax, recharge. As we stay here longer, maybe you can notice how some areas are getting lighter, where you first felt stiffness, it's opening up. And then let's just have our last three breaths here. the last exhalation can be throughout your mouth if that feels nice and then from here slowly come all the way forward onto your belly you can take both of your arms by your side turn your face to one side and maybe just wiggle a little bit with the hips and release your whole body to the earth only thing that moves is your breath which comes like a wave feel how as you inhale your body is gently rising try to receive your breath deeper and how with the exhalation your body softens and gently falls back down And then from here, slowly, gently, come up with your upper body as we're going to continue with the arm shoelaces or arm laces, arm stretch. So let's say we're going to take the right arm in front of us and we will pass the left arm underneath our chest. And then we will take the right arm also down. So the arms are staying at the shoulder level, palms can be turned down and you choose your intensity so you can crawl a little bit further away from you making the stretch stronger and this kind of shoulder laces tighter or you can keep them more loose more easy if you would have any issue with one of the shoulders maybe frozen shoulder or so on try to really find the intensity that works for you maybe only one arm can do it and the other arm can just be by your side or in front, or you hold yourself a little bit higher up. Or in the worst case, you can just come and sit up here and do it like here. Just having, or doing like one arm or the other arm. 
and then you can regulate a little bit more without the weight of your body. Yes, so the right arm is in front, the left arm is under. And you can release your chin into your upper arm. If your breast, your chest would be a little bigger, maybe you want to have a block underneath your head. And again, just observe as you enter this pose where you feel sensations. Probably the outer arm, shoulder blade, a spot between the shoulder blade. Remember, with every exhalation, you can soften into the pose. You can relax the muscles, even those that right now are passively stretched. Allowing the breast to move with grace, with abundance, with softness. In case there would be any pain, any sharp pain or too much intensity, you can always loosen your pose or slowly come out of the pose, give yourself a little break and then go back. It's very important that we find the right place to be in a posture with our own unique body. There's no one else who can tell you where to be in a pose, how deep to go in there and what is good for you. You are responsible for your own body, your own experiences. And I would always play a little bit more on the safe side by saying less is more. If you're unsure, always do a little bit less. Go less deep, less intense. And since you stay there long anyway, the pose will give you a lot of benefits still. The last two breaths here. And then slowly, gently coming out of the pose, moving the arms carefully, slowly. And take your hands underneath the shoulders. You can place your forehead down to the floor and just do a little bit of shoulder rolls. And then place your arms down again. You can turn your face to the opposite side and just have a few breaths here to release, to let go and observe all the sensations that your body's going through right now as it's rebalancing everything that your pose created.
from here gently coming up and we will do the other side so this time taking the right arm under the left arm on top reaching first one side and then the other side and then regulating your own intensity once you are in there then you can gently release your chin to your upper arm always nice to remember which arm is on front so then you don't do two times the same side although your shoulders will definitely tell you which side you already did and once you have your pose again just drop in there and with every exhale surrender to the pose more Feeling the sensations, observing them. It's always important that we do feel a stretch, that we do feel a compression. We do feel the pose is working in depth on us, on our deeper tissues, in our joints, our fascia, connective tissue. But it's not working in a very intense way you want to be able to relax and let go and your nervous system to really get the message that it's safe to be here if you go in a pose which is too intense for you some part of yourself will still stay alert and controlling and with that you would kind of block out the experience of transcending the mind and tapping into a deeper presence. the last press here it can be a long full exhale through your mouth and slowly sliding out liberating those arms really moving slow and again just take the hand underneath the shoulders forehead and be on the ground just gently rolling the shoulders back a few times. And then release your arms by your side and turn your face again to one side. And taking a long inhale, imagine that breath brings energy all the way down to the toes. And with an exhale, you're able to release your whole body to the earth.
can observe your arms, the shoulders, your back, the front. Where do you feel sensations, some movement, some flow? And sometimes in a yin practice, our bodies are releasing memories, emotions. So you might have some unexpected inner movie going on and just please know that it's okay. And it's coming up because you're releasing it. No need to jump into it. And then from here, slowly coming up into a sphinx position with our upper body. And then if your sacrum is fine with that, you can just take your right knee to the side. So having this tipsy frog, this half frog with the sphinx. So if you need to, you can place something underneath your knee to protect. You can let the leg go a little bit lower or a little bit higher to the side. Just really feel with your lower back, if that's all right. And if not, then feel free to just do a normal sphinx. And so you can have the elbows under the shoulders or sort of under the shoulders, right? And you can drop your head back or forth or just keep it in a neutral way. You can even support your own head with your hands. And if your shoulders are sensitive and it's hard to hold yourself up here, you could just place a bolster under your armpits across. Again, enjoy where you have a nice stretch. Probably you feel an opening in the inner leg. You feel a little hip opening. You might feel compression at the lower back, the opening in the front side. Maybe some stretch in the shoulder area. And try to soften into this pose with your breath. If thoughts are coming, then always come back to the breath to really feel your inhale. Feel your As we let our head dropping down, if that's okay for your neck, you might feel a really nice stretch in the thoracic area or upper back. And the neck muscles. But as you lift, your head and if you would do right the opposite maybe you will feel more stretch and opening on the front side so we can always play with that what feels best for you
the last three breaths here. And then slowly taking your knee back behind. If you want, you can do a little hip sway here. And then slowly release yourself. Either again, just coming down onto the belly, into a belly shavasana with arms down by your side. Could be quite interesting to observe one side versus the other side. Or if your back was a little bit sensitive, you might want to come back into a child's pose between the two sides. Wherever you are, just take a few breaths there and just let go. Let go of the pose. And then slowly coming back for the other side. So again, having the sphinx, the arms, and then taking the left knee up towards the left shoulder. If your lower back was already pleased with the first sphinx por portion, then you can just come down with your upper body, take your arms into a cactus position, and then turn your face either to the left or the right, check again, again out which one is better for you. And then you would benefit from the hip opening, but no longer from the lower back compression. also play with the position of your head to stretch it to one side or to the other observing those interesting openings and sensations in our body
Notice what is changing, shifting as you stay longer in the pose. And what can you relax more? And the last two breaths here. Long full exhale. To release the leg. Maybe again, wiggle a little bit with your hips. And this time, just gently press yourself up into a child's pose. It can be with knees open. Relaxing your arms and your feet. Maybe needing a block underneath your head. Or a blanket underneath the knees. Just observe again all the sensations, maybe on your back, maybe on the arms and shoulders. And then from here, slowly on your next inhale, gently start to round yourself up. And then let's come into a windshield wiper. So you can take your hands behind you and just have a little bit of hip release. And from here, slowly opening both legs to the side. Again, you can roll the shoulders. You can move a little bit your head, your neck, just loosening the areas that today we work with. And then just bend one leg so your foot can come against your thigh. If you want, you can also keep both legs open or take the leg behind you. We will go into a lateral dragonfly. So for some people who have some limitations in their hips, it's easier to have one leg bent. You can even support it here. Depending on your rotation, might be also interesting or easier to take the leg behind you. And then from here, 
we might use a block or just gently come onto one side. Maybe you place your elbow onto your shin, maybe you place it on your thigh if your knee is sensitive. You can also put a block there. And then we're gonna take, you can also take the block on the outside of your leg and put your elbow on it. We're gonna take the opposite arm above the head. You can place your head on your hand and just gently reach up and over and then drop the arm on your head. Try to relax the shoulders, not crump it up to the ear. And if this is too much for your shoulder, you can just consider to take the arm behind you and kind of gently open your chest more up to the sky. Find the right position for that block. Important is that you're not leaning backwards, your pelvis is not tilting backwards. And important is also that we feel this opening on the sideways, on the arms, shoulders. A little bit our hips. Working actually on the whole body in this position. And again, try to find the depths where you feel kind of comfortable. You feel that there are some things opening up or getting stimulated by the compression, but it's not too intense. You can envision to stay here about three minutes. Once you have this openness in your chest, just fill it up with this beautiful, divine, bright, loving breath. If you notice your body is opening up more, you can explore if you maybe want to take it deeper. You don't have to, but maybe it's available to you. Last two breaths here. Long full exhale. And then slowly with your next inhale, really gently in a supported way, come back up to the center. Put even both legs out 
and just have a little bit of side to side fluid move to help your fascia to recoil. So after long hold stretches, it's important that we support the elasticity. So things that were stretched and open long, they can also just go back a little bit. You can have a moment in the center. Just take a few deep breaths. Sense and feel how your breath flows. How your space is inside. Maybe you can feel how it's already opening up. You feel more spacious. And maybe there is a difference between left and right. And then from here, let's just go to the other side. Again, you can bend your knee, take the foot behind you or in front of you, but just do equal to the other side. And then again, maybe you use a block, maybe you don't find the right place position for your elbow and your head. Possibly you could also use a little pillow between your hand and your head. And then taking the arm above the head first, just really feel this nice deep stretch and then gently drop it. Or if it's too much, take it behind you and gently roll your chest more open. Maybe you notice that one side is more open. Like for me, you see that I use the block on one side and I naturally don't need it on this side first. So I could be without or with. It's my choice, my decision. Sometimes less is more. But it's also important that you do feel an opening in it. Important to acknowledge the difference between sides and not take it as something bad, but just to acknowledge and being able to adapt the practice with acceptance, with understanding. And obviously what is already way open, you don't need to keep opening it, right? So that's why, for example, I'm not starting at my furthest edge here either, but a little bit higher. And once you have your pose, just relax. Let the breath come and go. Let it soften your body, soften your mind. Soften your pose.
observe what is getting softer lighter more spacious as we stay here longer and maybe you do want to explore if you can go a little bit deeper into the practice but never force it And the last three breaths here. Long and full exhale. And then slowly from here with an inhale gently carefully coming back to the center maybe sway a little bit from side to side those hands behind you and take this moment to do a little bit of windshield wipers to a little bit of shoulder rolls and neck rolls. And from here we will go down onto our back for a little mini shavasana on our back, but then also we will need the block afterwards for our last pose. So first just come and roll down carefully onto your back. And just shake a little bit your legs, your arms out. And drop your body down to the ears. Find a nice, neutral, relaxed position where your arms can be by your side. Your feet can fall open, the legs can be relaxed. And for a moment, observe all the sensations. Traveling in our body with curiosity, with kindness. And the last breath here, a nice long inhale. Then again, that breath really fill your inner space. A gentle exhale can be through the mouth. And I will give you two options for the last pose. It can be a halasana, or what we call in the yin, the snail. By only if you have no neck issues, no shoulder issues, that you can just gently take your legs up 
and you don't even need to place them down to the floor maybe you're just gonna support yourself here the idea is to give your shoulders a gentle pressure your back a stretch the whole back body a stretch but it shouldn't create any discomfort in the neck you can always bend your knees you can always put something underneath your feet yeah so that's one option the other option would be to just come into a supported shoulder stand so putting the block underneath the sacrum letting your arms relax by your side or maybe one hand on the heart one hand on the belly and just surrender to this inversion so your choice if you choose snail again no neck issues no serious eye issues and what is important that you can come out at any moment when it feels too intense Even if you start with snail, maybe at some point you join us. Bring the legs up in the air. Support the shoulder stand. Very relaxing, resetting pose. That cools down the nervous system. Regulates the flows in the body. brings relaxation and helps your breathing. And we are here for the last five breaths. Last full exhale. If you've been in the supported shoulder stand, gently take the legs towards you, take the block out. If you've been in snare, gently start to roll yourself down. Really carefully moving out of the pose. 
and then for a moment for all of us stopping with the knees to the chest take a few breaths here just stabilize relax your shoulders and to sway a little bit from side to side And if you feel you need it, you can have again a gentle shake or any other type of move, maybe a little twist or a happy baby, your choice, what your body needs. And then slowly roll down into our final Shavasana. If your lower back is sensitive, you might want to put a bolster or pillows underneath your knees. lying on your back for you is not comfortable you can always roll onto your side or onto the belly even you can just find a place where you can let go where you can settle where you can truly absorb and receive the energies, the gifts of your practice. Every breath sinking deeper. Into your natural self. Into the sacred space within. And then slowly start to deepen your breath again. Feeling your inner space and how that breath brings light, brings presence, brings warmth to that beautiful inner temple. And you can start to slowly move a little bit, your toes, your fingers. A 
or stretch a little. And then slowly roll onto your side. And from your side, gently in your own rhythm, come up into a comfortable sitting position. And you can place your arms nice and calm on your knees, on your legs. And find an openness in the chest, a softness in your face muscles. And a softness in your heart. Take a moment to feel where this practice took you, how you feel now. And where is your temple? Maybe it's more inside of you than before. Slowly taking both of our hands together in front of the heart into a prayer position. And then let just chant one arm to close this practice together. Taking a deep breath in. this practice contribute to your own happiness, freedom, peace. And may it be of the benefit of all. Namaste. Thank you for practicing with me today. I hope you enjoyed the practice. Please feel free to leave a little comment, feedback. And I hope to see you soon on the mat again. Discover other classes that I'm offering here free on my YouTube channel. And you can also explore our website www.rsyogahilversum.nl Rise and shine, it is a yoga and awareness. Where I'm happy to offer more in depth trainings and classes and immersions. And of course, retreats. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Take good care of you. Take good care of your energy, of your heart, and your sacred space. Namaste.